Second recordings. Mm -hmm. Hawkman? Yeah. yeah. Saw them in the 70s. Of course it did. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be like, yo, you gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. They are. They are. They are. They are. It's phenomenal. It's one of the greatest fucking shows ever. It's phenomenal. Well, it's been hurt either. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you, 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 you listen to that guy is so adventurous and has so much of that upwind, yeah. you know, surf, broad, psychedelic insanity all over it. That, yeah. And, yeah, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I was already pretty seasoned punk rocker as a kid when I first time heard that Kennedy, but it still really, really blew me the fuck away because they weren't just going like, you know, Chuck Berry kind of music, but, I mean, I love Chuck Berry, but they were, it wasn't like, the songs, like every part of the song was in different rhythm. It was, which is why a lot of people who, and we're gonna get to that, who got into hardcore, the next wave, all of them basically came from Jeff Kennedy's and Minor Threat. That was like the, with use like drugs analogy, that was like the crack. <laughs> I did that too. Yeah. Silver 33 years. <laughs> you know? And you know, and, and the awesome thing about Jello is that, and about a lot of Paul Brothers is that they, it's 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 a, it's a people that, a lot of these people in this genre of music, and they they take a stance and they live by it. You know, they're fearless and. Uh, when the war in Ukraine started, you know, two years ago, uh, over two years ago, the first people that reached out to me and said, hey, how's your family? Or, you know, let's do a song in support of Ukraine. They were Jello Biafra and, you know, Sick of It All, a hardcore band from New York City, and, you know, Patti Smith, you know, we did a benefit with her almost like days after the beginning. And, uh, you know, then we wrote a song with Jello. I mean, we, we know each other for quite a number of years. He's also a great friend with uh, Paul Jurgensen. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, always amazing, man. Um, you gotta check that song on the new album, yeah. And so, then, more punk rockers and hardcore musicians joined into that song. And it was such an immediate response, which is what I really, really value about punk and hardcore scene. It's like immediate uh, and uh, community vibe, like empathy, you know. Later on, there was more people who stepped in, you know, supporting Ukraine, but that was like six months later, uh, you know, which is, yes, thank you. We need all support we can get, but six days into it is more vital than six months into it. That's the support, you know, that Jello and people like that show, you know. So, yeah, you can check out the track, actually. It's, a, it's been out, you know, for a while. Uh, Trek, who plays drums from Green Day. Joel Ali from Fugazi plays bass. Monty from Ministry, also on guitar, uh, chimed in. And uh, Roger Mirat from Agnostic Front. Where is this going to be found? On all platforms. Yeah. One of the late, late, later uh, releases on, on my label. And uh, everywhere, YouTube. And it's a it's a charity single, so you know every uh, every every uh, play. Name of the single again? Yeah, uh, name of the single, United Strike Back. Yes. Yeah, so you know, I basically it was. It's it's self it's self aligned itself because this was like people who really mean what they say, you know. So you don't have to pull any teeth or hair, you know. So uh, here we're getting into one of my favorites rooms I could probably spend here a couple hours but uh let's all get over here I'll tell you why <laughs> um, let's turn around right here yeah and um, this this is a very 
particular special room for me. Uh, it's dedicated to New York hardcore. So, as you see, I'm wearing a, a special hat. <laughs> exactly about that. Now, why? Um, well, let's begin with, you know, just like this picture kind of says, says, says it all, you know, it's a live picture of agnostic front with Roger Mir and Venus Stigma, godfather of uh, New York hardcore, it's just characters that uh, created community and aesthetic that is thriving into this day. And this comes, I, the greatest way actually to find out about the story of Agnostic Front is to read Roger's book, which just came out a couple of years ago. It's a really, really fantastic read. The book is called uh, My Riot. And uh, yeah, I always loved Agnostic Front, but uh, when I met Roger when I was, you know, already could speak English, as opposed to meeting him when I could not speak English yet, <laughs> you know, it, you know, he told me that he was a political refugee from Cuba, which was new to me, you know. And so, and then, you know, I also picked up the book and I read the whole story. And I was not only blown away by, you know, and inspired by the action in, in this, and authenticity of this book, but also just the language of it. It's like, a lot of writers are trying to get there to that kind of energy of writing and it's, they almost never get there. I mean, it's a hard place to get because writers kind of, a lot of times operate like this. It's usually some more or less privileged, privileged person who goes, all right, to write something that is convincing, I need to experience it. So they go on a journey and you know experience one thing or another, and then they come back and reflect and write about it. So it's a kind of an ass backwards way of delivering a message because essentially their message is contrived. Here, the message is 1,000% authentic because it's hard ass street living in a squat in New York on the Lower East Side when you couldn't leave your apartment without a chain instead of your belt in case of you're gonna get jumped. And uh, music of that comes from that kind of energy. I mean, it was a brutal place. And uh, this also was inspiring for me to write my own book, which is almost finished. Because the way I grew up in Ukraine was not so unlike that. You know, the, the district where I grew up was kind of desolate. Uh, outskirt, which was by not any means uh, suburban. It was just basically a construction, big construction area with unfinished buildings where there was just, <laughs> they called them uh, <laughs> informal organizations of youth who <laughs> were <laughs> solving their matters on a regular basis. <laughs> that's a great name. Yeah, yeah. That's what they call this informal organization of youth. Do you need a business license? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here's my business card. I'm an affiliate of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that kind of music and that kind of energy, you know, uh, 